that this has to do with 2015. Hmm. Okay. Uh, but if we are to look at what people are saying, they're saying the crime, or let's, let's look at the government side of it now. They're saying that the crime has been committed, someone has served their time. Do you think that should be enough justification to now say, uh, go and say no more? Um, we, we, had it, we, we had this talk about somebody being remorseful. Uh, if you remember Lawrence Tanini and Mondi Osumbo, those that were executed for armed robbery in the, during the time of uh, in the, in the military era, they were remorseful even when they were tied to the stakes. You could even see some of them wearing a cross. The priest came and prayed for them. So maybe we should extend the, the uh, what do we call it, the pardon. We should also expand, extend it to, their fam to them so that their families do not carry this stigma around that uh, their father or their uncle or their brother was an armed robber. So if it's about remorse, it's very easy. Let people just be remorseful. Mm. There are a lot of people who stole chicken, who stole Indomie noodles and are in prison. And they are showing remorse in prison, but nobody is granting them any pardon. Mm. Why? Okay, maybe we should look at it from, from this angle. Is it about, um, okay, if you commit political crimes, then you are entitled to being pardoned, and if you commit economic crimes, then you should go in for it forever? You see, why I don't even care about this coup thing, when the, uh, the coup convicts being pardoned? We can debate that. It's a political issue. Uh, somebody is a coup plotter, you overthrew a, a government, He's now in power, and he says somebody else wants to overthrow him, so he has sentenced the person to death. I mean, it's like a, 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 a thief steals something, and another thief comes to steal it, and he's saying he's sentencing the thief to death. We can debate that, you understand, it's a political issue, but we don't need to deceive ourselves. A major problem we have in this country today is corruption. And by the time people are convicted, people are jailed, and we now go through the back door to start granting them pardons in the name of whether they are remorseful, whether uh, something is political, something is... I, I don't... I, I mean, we have to look at what is being damaged here. Before EFCC investigates, it's a problem. Because even the officials can be attacked, the officials can be induced. Now, they pass that stage and they take the case to court. The judiciary is another problem entirely. The judges may decide not to give uh, the verdict. Mm. So when a judge is courageous enough to jail a former governor, look at it, how many former governors have ever been jailed in this country? Only one, allow me say. It was, it, it was a very good message to Nigerians that even because the yeah, governor does not mean you cannot go to jail. The ones that were jailed before were under the military, but in the civilian admission, Ali Messiah was the first to be jailed. And since that time, no governor has been jailed. Many governors who are undergoing trials, they are members of the National Assembly making laws for the good of this country, <laughs> as it were. So we are dealing with a very difficult situation. When the case gets to court, again, you have the media to contend with, because many of these people have a lot of investment in the media. Either they own it, or they are the major benefactors. And you start hearing, oh, this is a victimization. It's because this man is not from your geopolitical zone. It's because uh, this man didn't support all time. It's because this man didn't do this or that. We are still contending with that. Then a judge is courageous enough to say, I'm sentenced to death, uh, to, to, sorry, to, to, uh, to so so no bad years in prison. Yes. Hmm. And at the end of the day, the president is saying, look, whatever you guys are doing, I'm here. Uh, but to pardon. from the position of government, it is clear that he has served his time. Is that a case of the state should not consider pardon for those who have served time for Those a crime? who have served their time by constitutional provision, after 10 years, they can no longer be referred to as ex-convicts. They are free after 10 years. So, by the holy... So you would have preferred the government would hold fire for another 10 years and then... All things are lawful, but are all things necessary? What message? What message are you sending to me as a young man? That if I get myself into government, as you, as you help myself, and make sure that I have political protection, we are damaging the, it, any society that doesn't have a moral foundation. It's, it, it's an unstoppable disaster. Today we keep referring to the U.S. to the U.S. If you committed a crime in 1960, you can still be tried today. In the U.K., they just jailed an MP because of a traffic offence for lying under oath. When uh, uh, Salisu Buhari, as Speaker of the House of Representatives, lied. 
forged certificates, all kinds of Toronto certificates that he was parading. The same year, he was pardoned by President Olusha Gombasanjo. So what message are we saying? We are not just, we, we are not interested in... You mentioned that parody. just now. It's quite, intrig it's quite interesting that you mentioned that. Well, that there is already a precedent to the pardon of Alamesia then. Yeah, yeah. And that being the so why is this one cutting so much? Yeah. The seed we have sown that mm -hmm. we are reaping. When General Muhammad Ubuari took over from when he overthrew uh, Shagari in 1983, he sentenced the governors to several years in prison and seized the loot, seized their property. General Babangida came in and released all of them and gave them back their property, gave them a part of the bank and told them to come and participate in the transition program. And so we have many of them being elected as governors and all that, uh, old, you know, the era of old breed and new breed politicians. So we saw that seed, we created an impression, we have established a tradition, and we are keeping to it. So when President Jonathan says it's a breath of fresh air, uh, the, what he has done now shows that actually it's a breath of the air that we've been breathing for the past <laughs> 10, 